Good afternoon. On behalf of the Union Public School District, I would like to commend the veterans here on this truly monumental day. It is an honor to stand before you all. Each of you are actual heroes who, for the sake of sustaining a free country, placed your lives on the line and opposed the evils in this, in this world that sought to render our country to a meager state. You may not have the power of superhuman strength or the ability to shoot laser beams from your eyes, but you don't need that. Your power lies within your heart, a heart that felt morally obligated to confront the tyranny of those whose purpose was to break the superpower that this country managed to become due to those who fought and died for it. Your courageous acts have not gone unnoticed, which is why we praise you now. Before we begin the ceremony dedicated to you, I would like for us all to think about the 11th month of the 11th day and the 11th hour. When those, in 1918, when warfare ceased and committed this day for those who are fighting and those that perish. In honor of the glorified heroes who are no longer here with us, I would like for us all to take 11 seconds to thank those who have, fight, who have fought for us and died for us. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Rowan Fiesel and I'm a senior at Union High School. And today I'm going to read a poem by Billy Collins entitled A Sight. Last night I watched a documentary on war. And the part I carry with me today was the spectacle of a line of maybe 20 blinded soldiers being led, single file, away from a yellow cloud of gas. That must be what accounts for this morning's brightness. Sunlight slathered over everything, from the royal palms to the store awnings, from the blue Corolla at the curb to a purple flower climbing a fence. One gift of sight after another. I couldn't see their bandaged faces, but each man had one hand resting on the shoulder of the man in front of him so that every man was guiding and being guided at the same time and in the same tempo, given the unison of their small, cautious steps. Thank you. Does this sound better? you got to talk into it a little bit more. Um, if everybody would please rise for the pledge and stay standing for the Star Spangled Banner, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets regular The bombs bursting in air Gave That our flag was still there. Oh, said does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the
When Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner over 200 years ago, he called America the land of the free and the home of the brave. Those words are as true today as they were then. Throughout this nation's history, America's soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen have bravely answered the call to defend our freedom, to aid our friends and allies, and to turn back aggressors. We can never fully repay our debt or gratitude to the millions of American service members throughout the years who have died in the battlefield or have been wounded. We can, however, recognize and thank the 25 million veterans still living today. These words are inscribed on the Korean War Memorial in Washington, D.C. Our nation honors her sons and daughters who answered the call to defend a country they never knew and a people they never met. These words apply equally to our veterans who are here today, as well as our current service members who are helping to maintain the peace throughout the world. The price of freedom is high. We cannot afford to forget those willing to pay it. Today we celebrate America's veterans for keeping this nation the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. The holiday that became Veterans Day was first observed as Armistice Day in 1919. The ceasefire that marked the end of World War I had taken effect at 11 a.m. on November 11, 1918 and President Woodrow Wilson declared that the first anniversary of that event should be marked with a day of reflection and gratitude. World War I was hoped to be the war to end all wars, but that was sadly proved not to be true, and after World War II in 1954, President Eisenhower officially changed the name of the holiday from Armistice Day to Veterans Day. Veterans Day is not to be confused with Memorial Day, a common misunderstanding. Memorial Day, the fourth Monday in May, honors American service members who died in service to their country, while Veterans Day pays tribute to all American veterans, living or dead, but especially gives thanks to living veterans who serve their country honorably during war or peacetime. We are honored to have many of our local veterans here today. Please know that we admire your bravery and are thankful for the sacrifices you have made. Good afternoon. It is my honor at this time to introduce our local veterans who have joined us today for this celebration. As I call your name, if you would stand and be recognized, and I'll ask the audience to wait until all veterans have been introduced before you applaud, please. Jackie Osmer, Air National Guard. Allen. Bowler in the Navy in World War II. And you may be seated once I call your name because we're going to have you stand again in just a second. Troy Boyle, Army. William Boyle, Army. Jerry Boyle, Army. Jesse Chisholm, Navy. Kendrick Clay, Army National Guard. Earl Davis, Army National Guard. Billy Gressett, U.S. Army and Air National Guard. Herbert Johnson, Army. Jason Michael Haney. Air National Guard. Brian Norman, Army National Guard. Ann Payne, U.S. Marine Corps. Kevin Payne, U.S. Army. Dub Rayner, U.S. Army Infantry in World War II. Steve Robinson, Air Force. Melton Sable, 
Air Force. Tina Seals, Air National Guard and Army National Guard. Casey Spivey, Army National Guard. Don Thomas, U.S. Navy. Andy Vance, Air National Guard. Todd Vivery, Army National Guard. Benny Ware, U.S. Navy Reserves. Lori Willis, Army National Guard and Air National Guard. Tom Winston, Air Force. Dale Eugene Wright, U.S. Marine Corps. Robert Blunt, Air National Guard. Victor Cheney, U.S. Air Force, Mississippi National Guard. Kelvin Nichols, Army. Alan Calloway, Army. Ronald Myers, Army. Mike Price, Army and Air Force. And Chris Kilpatrick, U.S. Army. Did I miss anyone? Thank you. To you ladies and gentlemen seated in front of me, thank you for your service. And at this time, the Pride of Union Band will play a medley of anthems from the different military branches. So servicemen and servicewomen, as you hear your anthem played, please stand. This conflict took more lives and destroyed more land and property around the globe than any previous war. Among the estimated 45 to 60 million people killed were 6 million Jews murdered as part of Hitler's Holocaust. Today, we are honored to have two veterans who served in World War II with us today. They're Mr. Doug Rayner and Mr. Alan Bowler. Mr. Rayner is 95 years old and served in the U.S. Army Infantry during World War II in Germany. 
Mr. Bowler is 97 years old and he served in the U.S. Navy during World War II on the USS Dayton Cruiser in the Pacific. Please help me welcome each of them. I hope I speak loud enough that I don't want to look around and see somebody and say, what did he say? Can y'all hear me? Now, the bad part of getting up in front of a big crowd like this, every eye in the house is looking at you. Well, I'll get started now. I'm Sergeant D.B. Rayner. I served in the 84th Infantry Division, 333rd Battalion M Company. And the 84th Infantry Division was known as the Rail Splitter Division. And uh, so I was drafted in the Army in uh, November 1944. And went to uh, I was inducted in Fort McClellan, Alabama. Went on down to Blanding, Florida, Camp Blanding, Florida, for basic training. 40 pound bag, pack on your back, and a nine pound rifle. Walking in the sand. And a lot of fun. And after the basic training was over, we were, sent, we were sent to Fort Meade, Maryland, where we were shipped overseas on a troop ship named Heritage. Not Hermitage, Hermitage. And that trip took us 14 days to get to France. We landed in Le Havre, France. We uh, camped out in the woods up above the port in, in our individual tents and uh, all I had for a pillow and my helmet liner wasn't too soft and uh, next morning there's a lot of commotion going on and it woke me up I scrambled out of that little tent and I said what's wrong with y'all he said boy wake up the war's over and we had landed one day before the war was over and and I slept through part of it. <laughs> anyway, then we left, left there on our, on our way to, to Germany on the boxcar. The boxcar was supposed to, when it was hauling horses, it hauled eight horses or 40 men. We had 40 men, no horses. And, so we traveled across the country and stopped a few times and put our tents up. And we stopped in a, a I'll, I'll catch it in a minute. Anyway, we stopped on the way a time or two and slept in tents. Finally wound up in a little place in Germany, a little village called Weinheim. That's where we joined the 84th Infantry Company, Company M. We joined them. They had already occupied a, a village and we stayed with them until they had what they called points. You can go home on points. I don't know how long you've been in the service and, and if you was a combat veteran, you get to go early. So I Bunch had to go home, and we just transferred us new recruits, was transferred to a quartermaster corps. And uh, so we, we stayed there with, and as, as a lot of people were there then as occupational troops. And I stayed 
there in Germany for a year and a half. And on my birthday, the 18th of July, 1946, uh, I came home. And, and I, I went to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, where I was discharged and caught a bus to Little Rock, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I probably left out some, but you don't want me to add lib and add what I know. Glad y'all got this for me to hold on to up there. I'm Alan Bowler and I'm 97 years old. 1943, I finished high school at Union High School. Wasn't long after that, wasn't long after that till I got my greetings. And there were four bus loads of us that went to Camp Shelby. They put all of the young men in the Navy the time I went. And they sent, after boot camp, they sent me to, great, uh, to uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And I stayed there till on in the year of uh, 1944. They sent me to Newport, Rhode Island. And we waited till they completed uh, the USS Dayton a small cruiser in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And when they got it completed, they loaded all of us on it. We went through the canal and went to Pearl Harbor. We saw some of the action that had gone on there. From there, I went to the Philippines. And from there, we gathered up the last fleet that went in around Japan. And we bombarded two different days, I know. And them battleships can make a lot of racket when they shoot over you. We was on a small ship. Six inch guns on the ship I was on. There's 16 on the ones that shot over us. And when they dropped the atomic bombs, they moved us out. We didn't know why, but they moved us out from that area. And they, then they moved us back in, and I was on the cruiser that circled the battleship when peace was signed. But the one thing about it, they shot a toy Peter at us one night, and I just got off to sleep. And you can dress a running by putting your clothes on, climbing them stairs on them, on them ships. And I thank y'all. And we ought to thank God that we're still here. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is not in my notes, but it, it just came upon me last night when I was uh, thinking about who was going to share with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen and students, I'm not sure if you realize it or not, but there are not too many opportunities to experience what you just did left on this earth. And so, thank you guys. Um, so, so I want to share a few words from President Kennedy, and I'm going to share the quote that you expect me to share, but then I'm going to get to another one. So uh, John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. That's the one we're familiar with. Um, so he challenged every American to contribute in some way to the public good. 
and that way is different for everybody. But he also said this, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. So our words can be empty. You can say whatever you want to say, but what really matters is what we do with those and what happens after that. So it's not enough to say it, we need to also be it. We need to be grateful for what these ladies and gentlemen and others like them have done. And we need to be thankful and we need to live it out in everything that we do. Um, the greatest prayer you can say to our God, right, is thank you. And we don't do that enough. Um, two words, eight letters, thank you. Each day that passes, we move further away from the wars and conflicts that these ladies and gentlemen have uh, been a part of, and we move closer to ones that, that may or may not come. Um, the heroes pass, and time pushes. We get new headlines in the news. Life gets in the way. We move through our own time, rarely considering what came before us, right? Life gets in the way. Ceremonies are important, but our gratitude has to be more than once a year on Veterans Day. So in closing, I wanted to share a few lines from another president's speech. They're lines that I doubt you've heard, but maybe. Uh, they were shared by President Ronald Reagan at a Veterans Day ceremony in 1988 at the Vietnam Memorial. For too long a time, they stood in a chill wind, as if on a winter's night, winter night's watch. And in that night, their deeds spoke to us, but we knew them not. And their voices called to us, but we heard them not. Yet in this land that God has blessed, the dawn always at last follows the dark. And now morning has come. The night is over. We see these men and women and know them once again. And know how much we owe them, how much they have given us, and how much we can never fully repay. And not just as individuals, but as a nation. We say we love you. Reagan's speech ended there, but I wanted to add those two words that I spoke of earlier, so thank you. Thank you to everyone here today, and thank you to our veterans who are here and those who are elsewhere for your service. And in this season, let's remember gratitude. Thanks for coming today.